Madam Toastmaster. I grew up in Manhattan, Kansas, a medium-sized college town, where my dad worked as an agricultural economist, helping farmers understand the financial side of their farming operation. We start, I got to start spending time at her family farm when we would visit. And on those visits, I would help with whatever was going on, feeding the cows, fixing fence, whatever was going on in the day-to-day -day life of that farm. Over time, I gained more appreciation for the farm lifestyle. And again, I thought I knew just a little bit more about farming. But it wasn't until I started spending one to two weeks a year helping with the wheat harvest that I fully, more fully experienced, if, even if for just a short time, all the, what goes into wheat harvest. And during those times I ex experienced all five senses and I'm gonna share, with those, share those with you today with a few of the aspects oh. that I experienced. First, we start off the chores early in the morning because even during the busy time of wheat harvest, certain things need to be done day to day. And in this case, keep making sure the cows are fed and watered. This always took place early in the morning for a couple good reasons. One, it was still too damp from the morning dew to cut the wheat, which you can't cut grain when it's too wet. And two, during Kansas summers, as in many places, you want to get your outside physical labor done as early as you can before things get too heated. People who haven't spent much time in Western Kansas think it's a dry, featureless, black and white wasteland like what's depicted in the beginning of The Wizard of Oz. I think nothing could be further from the truth. Early in the morning as you're doing your chores and the sun is starting to climb above the horizon, the hues and colors change and shift and grow more intense. The cool morning air is thick with, with moisture and sometimes fog. The still air is punctuated by the cacophony of a variety of different bird calls. And walking through the farmyard, you're met with varying uh, smells from pleasant fresh cut hay to not as pleasant fresh cow poop. After we've warmed up a little bit, we go back to the farmhouse to get a, a hearty breakfast to keep us going through the morning. And as we walk in, we're instantly embraced by the fresh, the smell of fresh brewed coffee, sizzling bacon, and French toast. Turning to the dining room, you see a full set table, all the dishes and silverware, the full array of condiments, because you never know if you're gonna need ketchup when you're eating French toast. Dur uh, daylight hours during harvest are a very precious commodity. And so you don't, wait, you don't waste any time eating lunch like you normally do. So instead of coming into the, the house, cleaning up, sitting down for lunch, you take a cooler full of food with you out to the field. So every morning as you get up from the breakfast table, there's a cooler and a water jug waiting for you. The cooler full to the brim with snacks and lunch and beverages. And this isn't your typical sandwich and a bag of chips lunch. No, two sandwiches, three bags of chips, cut apples, string cheese, a juice box, various other drinks, granola bars, Good thing my mother-in-law packed snacks for the afternoon or I might have starved to death out there. Um, so this, the senses I've been sharing so far have been the five standard sight, hearing, smell, taste, and touch. But when doing some research to get ready for the speech, I discovered there was another sense that I didn't know about. 
I'm going to read it because it's, I want to get it right. The, the vestibular sense gives us awareness of body balance and movement. It measures acceleration, G-force, body movements, and head position. Examples include knowing you are moving in an elevator, knowing whether you are lying down or sitting up, and being able to walk along a balance beam. So my main job on the farm during harvest was to drive the full grain truck to town while my father-in-law kept the combine going, continuing to cut wheat while I filled the other truck while I was away. This might seem like a benign and boring activity, but nothing could be further from the truth. This wasn't like driving your Subaru to Safeway. No, this was the most harrowing trip to town you've ever experienced. You see, the grain trucks I drove can't be considered modern mar marvels of safety. First of all, they're as old as I am. And that'd be okay if you're on a leisurely drive somewhere. But I'm hauling 20,000 pounds of wheat in a truck that's 10,000 pounds empty. Yes, we tripled the weight before I drove it. And the trip to town wasn't this nice, even paved path. It was narrow dirt roads that had steep up and downs. I felt like Max the dog pulling the Grinch's sleigh, careening down the hill in a sleigh stacked to the sky with presents on the ragged edge of control, if you could call it that. The steering wheel and brake pedal were mere suggestions to the truck, not commands of where, you wanted, of where it would actually go. Now, I haven't been able to help with wheat harvest for a number of years, and I miss it, and I probably won't have many more chances to help out because my father-in-law is nearing retirement, and that makes me a little sad. And not because of the five senses that I experienced, but because of the sense of accomplishment I always had. Madam Toastmaster.